Hey yeah, folks, so I just spent the last couple hours cleaning off my desk and fixing not one, not two, but three Game Boy Colors so that I could show off this new kit, this new uh, backlight kit that I just got. Um, things are kind of annoying. The caps go out on them and then you need to pop a new speaker in them. If your speaker looks like this in your Game Boy Color and you have no sound, it means you need to recap it and throw a new speaker in it. Anyway, common issue. Let's move on. So, what I've got here is this new Color Game Boy Q5 OSD IPS kit. Acronym soup here. Uh, big shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop who sent one of these my way to uh, check out. I did actually order one of these kits on my own. I Figured he was going to get one, but I wanted to take my chances and get it as quick as possible. Has ended up getting to me quicker. But anyway, let's pop it open, see what we got inside. So, we've got a nice custom lens. You might notice that the uh, bezel on that is pretty thin. More on that later. Got some insulating stickers here. Some double-sided adhesive. More double-sided adhesive. The actual kit itself. The screen. And some wire to get it all installed. Easy peasy. So What's cool about this kit in particular... Oh, well Marco, there's been like 10 LED LCD kits. Well, my friends, what you don't realize about this one is how much bigger this thing, the screen is, compared to a stock Game Boy. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I don't actually have one assembled at the moment. But just look at those bezels. Look at how much thinner that is. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's time to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started by um, setting all this junk aside. Normally I would start by disassembling Game Boy. Um, I hope by now you guys know how to take apart a Game Boy. But I've already taken them all apart because I had to fix them. So nine screws later, here we are. Let's uh, Let's do this. Let's test it out. I'm going to pop a screen out of here. This is the shell I'm going to end up using. And let's try this thing out. So I have three motherboards uh, to try here just in case there's an issue with one of them. Uh, I'm going to be using this CPU 02 board for no reason in particular other than the fact that I'm using a clear shell and it hasn't yellowed. Um, Game Boy consoles in clear shells, the silk screen tends to yellow after 20 years, and um, of the three, this one isn't yellowed, so, or it's the least yellowed. But let's get a baseline, because I'm sure you guys are going to be wondering about battery life, and that is one thing I cannot test in a 40 some odd minute video. Probably just jinxed myself, now it's going to be an hour and a half. power supply in here. And the game I test pretty much every other console with at this point, or every other kit. Set that to 2.4, turn it on, and turn it on. So I know it's kind of hard to see, it's very small on the screen there, but it is that blue number right there. 
at 2.4 volts, this thing is pulling 91 to 114 milliamps, depending on how I'm moving it around. The uh, resistance will change on the alligator clips and that will increase the power used. So usually when I'm putting my spreadsheet together, I usually just take the average of that. Also, you can see this bar graph here. You can see the power just jumps up and down because it might take more or less power at any given moment. But just for reference, about 100 milliamps, which, nah, nah, I'm not gonna speculate. I have no idea how this is gonna work. I, why did I unplug that? I didn't need to unplug that. I have not tried this out yet. Go ahead and get this plugged in. We'll try out the new one. You should always, always, always test your kit before installing it. Um, if you don't have like a power supply you can plug in, just rest it in the back half of the shell and you can pop batteries in there. In my case, I'm using a power supply though, so. I have to have the back off, otherwise I can't get a good grip with the uh, red clip. I know some people love these connectors, but I hate them so much. These. These ones in particular, they never snap what I would feel properly. It always feels kind of sketchy doing that. Anyway, let's try it out. In the same place, we are pulling pretty steady 216, of course, as soon as I said something, 216 to 235 milliamps. It is cycling through color palettes right now, and it will cycle through brightness, just because that's unfortunately how these things go when you have touch sensors and they're not perfectly insulated. Of course, now I can't get it to change brightness. I can get it to change palettes all I want. We'll have to test that more later. Oh, there it goes. Three, two eighty, two ninety, two eighty five ish. Oh, that wasn't max. Three twenty one. Nope, we're going higher. Three thirty seven. Get another step. 352. So anywhere from 215 milliamps to what I say, 352. That's a significant increase. You're looking at anywhere from uh, half to quarter battery life. So if you were getting um, 20 hours, you're going to get between 5 and 10. And that's before a flash cart. Flash cart will totally ruin your day. Anyway, go ahead and get that unplugged. Get this out of here. So soldering is completely optional with this kit, but Half the purpose is that it has that sweet on-screen display, so soldering is highly recommended. Um, unlike some other kits though, you will have to cut apart your shell. It's not recommended, but required. Um, 
I don't butcher this, but let's see what happens. I'm going to start by removing this sticky gasket. Start by trying to remove this sticky gasket. And if you have a rotary tool or something or equivalent um, or hell even a uh, desktop mill that would be the <laughs> ideal way to trim this um, and were I not making a video that is exactly how I would trim this but I am going to show you the easy way to do that if you don't have a Dremel flush cutters so we need to remove basically this entire internal frame. If you look at how big the LCD is, and how big this uh, cutout is here, you can see it's not quite going to fit unless we modify that. We'll also have to cut out the uh, frame itself, but I'll show you an easy way to do that. I'm trying to remember there's an easier way to do this, and I think there is. I'm going to start by making some uh, vertical cuts here. Separate this out into long, flat sections that I can then cut apart. As of the time of filming this video, there are currently no brackets for this. By the time I have this video uploaded, I'm sure there will be at least one. Actually, I can't say that. I haven't actually checked if there are brackets. I'm assuming there aren't because very few people actually have these kits right now. So my shell is a little bit on the brittle side. So I'm just pulling chunks out. That is not necessarily the right way to do that though. A better way to do that is going to be with either a craft hobby knife or a box cutter or something. Score that. And then we should be able to break it off. I might need to go get some pliers. Yeah, I'll be right back. The more you score, the easier it is, but you can take shortcuts here. I'm getting a little bit more leverage, especially if you're using an OEM shell that's a little bit on the brittle side. And I need to do that. And I'm not applying a whole ton of pressure because I'm just trying to score it, I'm not trying to cut through it. And be careful if you've already removed this and you're scoring this way, because if it slips you're going to mar the inside of your shell. If you're not using a transparent shell, I suppose that does not matter in the slightest. But I am, because they're neat. And because that way I get to show you guys what an install in a transparent shell looks like. In case you're thinking of the same.
No worry if there's little bits left over. We'll get to that momentarily. All right, now the fun part. Doesn't matter if you cut into that a little. Don't need to cut that whole uh, LED thing off. As far as cutting into this top bit, you want to cut to the very top of the lens and no more. My understanding is, as long as you get the uh, LCD in straight, it really doesn't matter too much where exactly it's positioned because one of the cool features of this kit in particular is that you can move the image around on screen just a little bit to get it centered if you uh, didn't get it bang on the first try. Also highly recommended to wear eye protection. In case you didn't hear that thing just fly off at Mach 1 and bounce off my wall. And I am terrified of breaking these because of how brittle this is. So from here, I would cut the rest off with my uh, flesh cutters just like this, like that, but I am genuinely afraid that it's going to crack the screw post off. So I'm going to, I'm gonna go clean this up on my Dremel, um, just to show you though, but that should be enough to get this in there. Aside from the very little bit over there, you can see it does fit almost. It's not clearing this LED area because it's not all the way over to the left, but as soon as I remove that little bit of material to the left, to the right of the screw post, it'll fit in there nicely. And you can see how little it actually sticks out from behind the, uh, from behind the shell. So bear with me just a minute here. I'm going to go clean this up and I will be right back. That is optional as long as you get a nice smooth surface and as long as your shell isn't as brittle as mine and doesn't crack when you try and uh, finish trimming. But uh, I'll be right back. And just like that, it's magic. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. I just noticed I missed a spot. That's frustrating. But oh, no, I'm not going to worry about that because that should come off. Uh, but anyway, I cleaned up the edges. You can see there's still quite a bit of... Um, I forget what you call this. I know these are plastic chips, but there's a specific name when it's still attached to the shell. Anyway, I want to say flashing, but I think that's for um, injection molding. Anyway, besides the point. All nice and cleaned up. That fits in there, just like that. And uh, we're almost done. Almost. So next, I need to trim the uh, lens window. Let me get this old lens off here. 
But again, I'm just trying to be careful because I know this shell is on the brittle side. And I don't want to test it and find out how brittle. Alright. So now, the easy way to do this, pop the lens on there. And in this case, it's a clear shell, so you can see. But I am going to take my knife, and what I'm doing right now is I'm tracing the line. You can see on the lens itself where the uh, center cutout is. I'm going to trace that line with my... Uh, blade here, more or less. I'm going to tend towards the inside, not significantly mind you, but about a millimeter or so. Even then, a millimeter is probably a bit too much. In that case, I messed that one up, so I'm redoing it. All right, I think that should be it. Oh yeah. Now I'm just going to go over my score lines several times. Applying just a little bit of pressure. Not much. Don't need a lot. Do that on each side. can't actually see my line because of the light. I'm applying very little pressure. Just trying to give myself a line to work with here. Now another tool you can use if you have them is a uh, big file. That'll work perfectly. It'll give you nice straight edges. It'll go real quick because this is plastic. If you're like me and all you have is needle files, you don't want to do that because that's going to take forever and you're not going to get a very good straight edge. Of course, how I cut, I'm not going to get a straight edge with this either, but it should be fine because it shouldn't be visible once the lens is on. How brittle this shell is, I'm probably scoring way more than I need to. So, let's try it out. I uh, left my pliers at the rotary tool. So I'm going to abuse my flush cutter. No, I'm not. I'm going to go get my pliers. I really don't want to break another good flush cutter. And I could just get up and go get the proper tool that I already have. Oh, and this broke at the first line I made right there. I 
have to come back and finish that. Remember I mentioned those files, those needle files? I have to break the... oh, there it goes. Probably still going to have to break them out, just kidding. For the uh, corners. It's not breaking cleanly at the corners. take my utility knife to try and clean up these edges here. Safer approach, cleaner approach is a uh, file, but this works too. Something, something, I'm not responsible if you cut yourself, or fuck up your Game Boy, do any of that shit. You're an adult, you can make decisions for yourself, or you're not an adult. But I specified to YouTube that this video is not for children, so you're an adult. That's the thing now that you have to specify when you upload videos. For some reason that protects children, even though they almost universally check the I'm an adult box. Or maybe that's just me when I was a child. Alright. Back in the golden age of the internet. Before the apocalypse. Get off my lawn. There we go. Look at that. Looks terrible, doesn't it? Yeah, I know. Just using the tip to help get under that paper. If this happens, you want to get the whole paper, not just the uh, sticky side. I tend to just give up and try in another corner. And I don't think I'm going to have any luck with this. I think I'm going to have to just send it. Yep. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. downside to using a blade for this is if you're not careful you will mar the back side of the lens and since this is a custom lens you really don't want to do that. There we go. I like to save these center squares in case you ever need double sided tape or something. And 
I'm just going to drop that right in there. Because I can see that I have enough trimmed. Cool, cool, cool. some of the uh, shavings out there. All right, now we need to put the screen in. Here's the, uh, the important part to get right. Because if you use adhesive, and if you do it wrong, you are going to have a bad time. Looks like there's some something on the glass, but I think it's on this side. So I'm not going to worry about it too much. If you do not use adhesive, the screen could move around. You could get dust in there. But as you can see, there's already dust in there. So, I want to try and be careful. The important thing with this screen is that you get it straight. It's not so much, not a huge deal if it's not lined up perfectly, but it has to be straight cannot adjust that in software. So just to give myself a little bit extra leeway, I'm going to just trim a little bit off this one. Just that one. Because it didn't look... As long as you leave this top part in here, you should still have something to line it up against. So I think we're going to be good. This, I don't know which side is which. I bet it goes like that. Or, alternatively, instead of messing this up for a video, I could just look at the pictures, the install. This goes like that. And peel this up here. Probably doing this backwards. Like the other screen, or like the other kits, I'm betting it's a lot easier to install the adhesive before the screen. Unfortunately, we are already committed, so. I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, I can see I didn't quite trim that enough. And that is the easier option. yourself a favor and put the adhesive in first. You can use the lens to make sure that you're cutting properly. But the adhesive gets stuck down before the lens. That way you don't have to play plastic surgeon getting this all nice and lined up straight. Cool, 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 cool. We're just gonna send it. Worst case scenario, I have another one of these screens. A little bit of 
can there. Peel off the plastic. Babs Yanty. Oh, that's so terrible. There's so much dust. All right, well, I'm gonna just leave that for now, but how I'm gonna end up fixing that is a little bit of heat to take the lens off, pop it off with a suction cup or something. I'm gonna wait until I have this assembled so that there's a little bit more support behind the screen, but I'll have to pop the lens off. And as you can see right there behind the lens and right there, just a little bit of schmoo. But next up, we have this really crummy tape that I hate, but it serves a purpose, so we use it anyway. It is so that we don't have to worry about insulating the back of this thing. And then to install this, install it like that. Oh, actually, let me fire up the whoops, soldering iron so I can get the uh, wires ready for install here. Might as well go all the way, right? Oh, so it comes with three wires, yet there's four pads. That's uh, kind of annoying. Highly recommend soldering this while it is not installed in the shell, but here we are. Do as I say, not as I do, etc. The reason I mention that is because there's danger of, um, whoever played the game Operation, you know the uh, goal is to not touch the sides, but if you can't see that, I already fucked that up. I'm going to try a different angle then. So I have these wires soldered to the select A and B pads. There's also a ground pad and a battery pad. The battery one is optional for, the only purpose that serves is a built-in battery monitor, but don't have to use that, especially if you're using a battery mod, or if you're, um, I'm willing to bet that it's calibrated for alkaline batteries and not nickel metal hydrides, but We'll try it out. We'll try it out anyway. I'll just go in here to my various lengths of assorted wire. And I will grab... No, I won't do that because none of those are long. I have a drawer full of little wire cuttings. moment please. There we go. I hadn't used this stuff in so long I couldn't find it. Uh, this is just 30 American wire gauge Kynar wire. I'm just going to cut it to the same approximate length. Just 
just to make the uh, wire management a little bit more reasonable. You can get that solder down. Cool, 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 cool. Now here is another thing we can use a little bit of double-sided tape for. I'm not going to use double-sided tape because I have a feeling I'm going to end up taking this apart at some point. So I'm just going to use a little bit of um, whatever this is called, Blue Panther's Tape. Just to keep this thing from wiggling around on me. But a little bit on the back, stick it down there. It would uh, be nice and solid. Oh, I have to do one more thing. I completely forgot about this. I'm sorry. We are going to install a new speaker. This is my um, known good test speaker. And unfortunately, the speakers for these things are bad, and all I have on hand are these. And yes, I do. I am fully aware that Funny Playing just announced, or even just released, rather, um, Game Boy Color speakers. I don't have any. I'm going to use a Game Boy Advance one. It'll fit just fine. There is a lot of solder in those holes. Now all I'm doing here is I'm just heating up one side to liquefy the solder and then on the other side I'm just shoving the wire in. That's it. There's already solder in there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We do all that and then this will go in there more or less like that. I think we actually have to turn it this way. But that should work just fine. All right, now we need to do the button wire controls. Let me pop the uh, buttons back in here before I get completely sidetracked and start putting it together. While you have it apart, this is a fantastic opportunity to clean it. I'm gonna skip that step because because why not? I will post in the description a uh, wiring diagram to uh, to get these wired up easily, but I still highly recommend double checking it with a uh, multimeter. In the off chance you have one of those super weird Game Boys, which I don't think exist, but I've never seen one. I'm sure someone somewhere. Alright, so how the button pads work on a Game Boy Color is this is a common ground situation. So one of the pads is ground and the other is the button itself. We are going to use select, which is that one right here. So that's the ground. We want this one, which is wired up to this via right here. And also, I believe, this bottom one right here on the left. So that's what I'm going to use. We are also going to use A and B, which are wired up over here. 
that's the ground. So we want to use that one there. That's the ground. We want to use that one there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I do remember things. Now, unlike the uh, Game Boy Pocket, which uses a matrix diode array, it actually does not matter where you wire these up as long as you wire it up prop to the uh, proper things. The Game Boy Pocket, you want to make sure to wire up pre-array a post array like I had in that other video. And usually these go pretty easily, but I'm having a hard time today. Having a hard time performing on camera. Happens to the best of us. There's nothing to worry about. one of them, but the other one I just can't get soldered to stick to. And sometimes it helps to just shove a wire in there. So that's what I'm going to try. There we go. That's B, or that's A, excuse me. This other one, let me get it untwisted. This is B. Sorry for being so zoomed out. Select, which goes over. Oh. And get it from this side. Nice and solid. And then the battery wire goes to the battery plus. Terminal. How's that view of the back of my hand right there? That's it. Bingo, bingo, bongo. Again, soldering's optional, but recommended. And let us use the other sticker. This is why I hate these stickers. Like, what's this doesn't actually stick to anything. This has adhesive on it, but it's the weakest adhesive. ever had the displeasure of using. Tuck those in there. Uh, 
Oh, how did I lose screws? Oh well, I'll mix and match. This is why you don't want to want to be careful if you're taping it down. You can see how that ribbon does not line up at all. I'm not too worried about just shoving it around because it's just um, masking tape. It'll unstick. But if you use double-sided tape, you're in for a bad time. The only wire that's showing is my battery terminal. If you're sincerely concerned about that, you can flip it over and just solder it on this side or even follow this trace see where it goes soldered directly to the trace instead but I'm not too worried about it get that installed oh nope And get it installed straight because you know you'll see it. I'm gonna use a plastic spudger here. Make sure it is nice and pristine. And that is why you never solder in the case. No matter how good you think you are, accidents still happen. And that one I'm going to stick all the way in that corner because I am one of the seven people that actually still uses the IR on the Game Boy Color. Well, no, not really, but I like to think I do. I do have a Pokemon Pikachu too. And... I do have Mystery Gift and Pokemon Silver and Pokemon Crystal. So there's zero reason I can't use it. I just don't. Cool, cool, cool. Drop that back in there. Helps if it goes in straight. goes. Power switch. Well, before assembling this any further, I should... Nah, we'll just, we'll just send it. I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll send. Ooh, maybe I can split the difference. Thought it would be a 40 minute video and then I jinxed it. And we're up to 55 minutes. I got some wires that aren't tucked away. That's okay. Done. Let's see if it works.
I need batteries. What did I do with them? How do I lose batteries? Find out on next episodes of Dragon Ball. Don't worry. Found them. They were in the Game Boy I was afraid I was going to have to use. Now the question is, what happened to the battery cover? There it is. Not quite as bright, but that is adjustable. So, let's fire up a game. So we can, uh... No? Oh, yeah. Takes a bit of getting used to. You have to, um, hit select and A or select and B to enter one of the menus. Uh... Vertical position. Now, it might look a little bit off on your end, but that's because I, I'm i looking at it at a different angle. When you look at it straight on, it's just about nice and centered, and thankfully it is not askew at all. So let's check out the... I'm going to turn that off. We're going to turn that on. So you can see in the top right, either my batteries are completely full, which I sincerely doubt, or they're pretty much empty, which looks a little bit more accurate. <laughs> but, oh, this looks good. This is good looking. I'm, I'm liking this. So, control-wise, you just saw me go over that, you can do the uh, buttons there. You can adjust the uh, colors if you want to make a custom palette. Or you can just bring them all the way up to 32 to get the normal palette. And factory mode reset if you wanna, if you mess things up beyond all recognition. And it'll time out or you can hit select B and it'll close. But look at that, man. That's freaking beautiful. And the best part, I don't see any frame dropping or tearing, but I haven't tried out the test ROMs yet. Let's try it out. Uh, so I'm going to use my Easy Flash Omega. I do have an EverDrive GBX7, which I normally recommend, but I like to use my Easy Flash Omega for that exact reason, because I like to see if these kits can handle um, booting a flash cart on rechargeable batteries and backlight kit because this is I I imagine this is how most of you are going to use your Game Boy. This is how I use my Game Boy at the very least. And as you can see it is not booting whatsoever. So one thing we can do usually what helps is we can uh, bring the brightness down all the way Nope. Select A to confirm, select B to exit. Drop that in there, I accidentally hit the touch sensor. So it's not on the lowest brightness, but we'll try it again. There you go. It boots as long as it's not maxed out. Let's try the torture test here. And I'll kill that light so we don't have any glare. And same spiel as usual, but in case you haven't heard it, I'll go over it again. Whenever the S in the word scrolling goes past the left bezel here, 
the console is issuing an LCD reset command to the uh, well to the LCD on stock LCDs. Uh, excuse me, that results in a dropped frame. On some older backlight kits, that results in some really nasty stuff, and that is particularly why I use this test to see how these kits handle it. And all I'm seeing is that single dropped frame, which means this is passing with flying colors. The other thing I'm looking at is to see if these bars are moving across at a steady pace and if there's any uh, vertical artifacting while they're moving. And I'm seeing none of that except for when the S passes on the left and it's, um, and it's resetting, which again, perfectly normal. That's expected behavior. That's ideal behavior even. But there is another version of this test that does not have the reset, just in case uh, you want to see how it looks, how it should look. Nice, perfect, smooth. Just like that. And I keep hitting the palette sensor every time I go to hit reset. So if, if you're bothering to install the button controls, it's probably worthwhile to uninstall the touch pods. Touch pods, which is that is that easy, or you can desolder. Let's try. Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening DX. I'll test a couple things here. So there is one thing that I like testing. Um, in this game, this game in particular, with how fast these logs scroll across the screen when you transition, and with the extreme color gradient between them, you know, dark light, dark light, dark light, on some of the kits, it uh, it results in some weird artifacting due to the uh, fact that the pixels are actually overdriven. Um, so what I'm looking for here is to see if I see any of that artifacting, and I do not. I see none of it. It looks perfect to me. The other thing I'm looking at is this dude's chain. On some of these kits, this chain just glitches the hell out and you see it, um, you know, it'll like flicker in place on the screen until you transition all the way over to the next scene. Um, that is also a symptom of that pixel overdrive effect. Not seeing it here at all, which is fantastic. The other thing you might notice is it is kind of flickering. Um, I'm not seeing it so much in person, but I am seeing it on the camera a little bit. That flickering is normal, and unfortunately it's just something we have to live with. That is by design. How these things work, Game Boys in general, um, the early games, there was no way to do transparency with the sprites, so most devs came up with the clever idea of just, well, we'll just turn it on and off real quick. And because of the abysmal pixel response time on the original screens, that resulted in a great transparency effect. In this case, the pixel response is actually a little bit slower than some of the other screens, but it's resulting in this perfect, nice transparency of the chain, aside from a little bit of visible flickering here and there. But, you know, that I think this is as good as it's going to get. This is actually one of the best that I've seen. Um, the other kits, the ones that use that, uh, the screen here, the long one, these kits tend to have trouble with this. So this, I think, is ideal, and I think we're doing good here. So just for, uh, just for giggles, here's the size next to a perfectly stock Game Boy Color. You can see how much bigger that is. And then next to one of these other all-in-one style backlight kits that were popular early this year early last year, I can't even remember at this point. Um, it's late 2020. 
aside from... Actually, no. The uh, original AGS-101 style backlight kits that Ben Ven had popularized, they had the exact same size screen area. So you can see how huge uh, this is. And I don't just mean that the screen itself is huge, which it is, but you can see how much bigger that screen is and it just looks so much better in my opinion. It's fantastic. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It's not perfect. Still a little bit of ways to go, I think. Um, this lens, actually, is one of the best I've seen. It still could use a little bit of work. The uh, logo is not quite right. The colors still have a little bit of way to, ways to go. You can see, especially in that purple there, it's much lighter on here. But the gray color is pretty spot on. The gray in the Game Boy logo, a little bit too light, but you know, it's still pretty damn good. It's very close. Text on the power symbol, not that great. You know, little things, but I mean, it's obviously not stock. Can't really fault it. Um, and unfortunately, with this screen, you cannot use a stock lens. You have to use the one that it comes with. Otherwise, you're going to be losing a lot of screen area. But, man, it's just so good. Compare that to the uh, other ones. You see the lens is completely wrong color. The logo is not so great either. I never like this Game Boy Color Light stuff. I know a lot of people do. Eh. I like Game Boy Color. There's no such thing as a Game Boy Color Light, despite what you want to call it. But anyway, look at that. It's a beauty. And, best part, it's working off of one of the most power hungry flash carts on mostly depleted nickel metal hydride batteries. You can see up there and it's running like a champ. One more thing to try, out of sheer curiosity, will it work on one of these AC adapters? Now, you have to be absurdly careful with these AC adapters. I'm using one from Jelly Billy Customs. Um, I don't actually know the specs on this thing. I'm fairly certain it's gonna pull whatever my USB port will put out. But on the OEM style, on the OEM AC adapters, you, you can't use a flash cart and an IPS kit. Um, you'll be lucky if you can use either, but you definitely cannot use both. They just aren't specced high enough. I'm curious if this is. When you insert one of these plugs, it cuts off the uh, battery connection. So you're not using batteries. You can leave them in, but just to prove a point, I'll go ahead and remove them. And yeah. Oh, just took a few tries, and that could just be the power switch, but it seems to be working great. And you can see my battery indicator is not there. Super nice touch, because it's not detecting any batteries. That is a really, really cool... Oh, no, it is there. I spoke too soon. I'm sorry. It shows my battery is empty. That's what I get for talking out my ass. But, I mean, I guess it blends in with the white backgrounds, that's nice. Let's try one more thing. I'm gonna try a couple alkalines that should be not dead, but probably aren't fully charged. I'm going to try an actual game, not a flash cart, just to get a little bit more of an edge. Uh, but it shows the exact same. My Game Boy is clearly receiving more power, but it still shows the exact same. So I'm thinking this battery monitor isn't the most reliable. It's probably not worth it. Not worth taking the time to install it which is probably why it only comes with three wires in the first place. I hate that these manufacturers do that. They'll, they'll bake a feature in, but you know, they won't tell you that it's not actually ready.
to use. They'll sell it before then, make money, then they'll fix the feature and sell you another kit. It's dishonest and I hate it. But here we are. Ugh. Can't really do anything with that. I'm going to try and hold it in there. I wish I can. Voltage up to three volts, still nothing. 3.8 volts, and the screen is still not showing, the battery monitor is still not showing anything. Power cycle it just in case. And you can see it's putting out 3.8 volts. And nothing. Bring it back down. And see, as I do that, the power LED is getting progressively more and more dim. Down to 2 volts, which is absurd. If your batteries get that low, it's probably not going to still be on. And there it goes. It dies at 1.7. But no battery monitor. Don't bother soldering that wire. Doesn't seem to work. So we will turn it off. And one other cool thing that I know a lot of you guys are real fond of that pixel grid emulation because this does use four times integer scaling. It does actually look pretty good on this kit, but I still prefer it off. I think it looks way better with it off. So I'm going to leave it off. And one more thing, but I'm going to switch off the power supply and switch it back on the batteries. Just to make it a little bit easier on myself. I meant to go over this in the Game Boy Pocket version of this uh, this kit, but I don't know. Didn't come up. I forgot. We're going to boot back into Legend of Zelda. So it may seem a little bit counterintuitive. Um, a, B, start, select is the soft reset key combo in most games. In Legend of Zelda, it is how you save, I believe. But as you can see, it brings up the display, and you're stuck adjusting settings in there now. But, yeah, that is one unfortunate thing of wiring up the button controls depending on which game you play it might interfere but it is what it is I'd still rather have it wired up than not and uh, there you go so my verdict um, this is my new favorite kit and I know I, I feel like I say that pretty much every video at this point um, so just you know check the date if you're looking at another kit, and this video is newer than that other kit video, and I said the same thing there, this is my new favorite. Uh, but the reason I'm saying that is because it feels like every single kit gets better than the, mo than the previous, and I genuinely feel that that's what's happening. Um, even though I wish they would just get it right on the first try, and you know, stop making this V1, V2, V3, V20 bullshit. Um, you know, they're, they're still making improvements. And, by the way, that is one hell of an improvement, I think. So, yeah. Point being, in the description there are going to be links to where you can grab this kit. There's also going to be a link to 
uh, my wiki page that I work on. I've actually written up a whole wiki on Game Boys, troubleshooting mods, that sort of stuff. Um, I feel like it doesn't get the attention it deserves. I put a lot of work into that thing. Uh, and there's a lot of good info in there, and that there's answers to a lot of common questions. Uh, but anyway, I'll throw a link to that in the description. One of those pages is a write-up on every single backlight kit that I am aware of. I will add this kit. I will add a line item for this kit because I don't think I have one. I will add my thoughts on this kit and it is broken down in sections by console. So I'll have one for DMG, one for pocket, one section for color, so on and so forth. And then just a quick summary of my thoughts of each kit and then at the beginning of each section is a summary of which kit I would pick for what. And Spoiler alert, it's going to come down to these two kits. Uh, the all-in-one kit, and then the Q5 OSD kit. I like the all-in-one kit still, because it's nice to be able to drop it in without having to carve up a shell. But this kit is better as long as you don't mind cutting up your shell. The, um, the bigger display is that much better. The display itself is much higher quality. There's better features. Um, at this moment in time, it is easier to find this. Well, maybe not today because all the vendors in the U.S. are out of stock at the moment. But that will change shortly, probably by the time I get this kit up. Who knows? Or this video. Um, but yeah, it, it all just depends on what you want. There's trade-offs for everything. And I like this kit. This is, this is the new hotness, I think. The trimming, while it is still quite involved, I think is a little, a little bit easier than uh, this kit. A little bit easier. It does take a little bit longer because you have to cut out the opening as well. But it's worth it, I think. Um, actually, when I factor in the opening, I suppose it's not that much easier, is it? So the trimming's a little bit harder, but it's a lot more of the same. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. I'm liking it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the description. Uh, oh, I'll throw a link to the speaker as well. It's not, it's not perfect. It doesn't fit perfectly. I would much rather use a the, the Game Boy Color version, which I suppose I'll throw a link to that one instead. I'll probably swap this one out by the time I get that, and then I have an excuse to go in there and desolder that wire and remove the touch sensors. Anyway, thinking out loud, sorry. But yeah, I'll throw links in the description where you can get one of these kits. Um, my thoughts, any extra notes, that sort of stuff. Thanks for sticking with me. I know I ramble a lot, but it's because I feel like I have important stuff to say. Wow, that's, that's not very humble. Yeah, I, I, I'm done. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.